Well, good morning, church. Welcome to Fairfax Bible Church. My name is Ryan. I'm on staff here, and this is my girl, Grace. Hi. She's going to help me with some announcements this morning. So, announcement number one. We have some online registers that we'd love for you guys to fill out just to let us know that you were able to worship with us this morning. There's a link down below in the Facebook chat or a button on our website that you can click to fill those out. Uh, there's a spot for small groups if you're interested in joining a small group or interested in Intro to Fairfax Bible Church. There's also a spot on there for prayer requests if you have any prayer requests uh, that you'd love for us to be praying for this week. Uh, we have a group of folks that... Uh, prays for those every week, and we want you to know that you are loved and cared for, which leads to announcement number two. Two. Our prayer team is meeting every Thursday at 12 p.m. That's 12 o'clock noon on Thursdays mm -hmm. to go through those prayer requests, and they have opened that up to uh, anyone in the church who wants to join in that. So if you're interested, we'll send out the, the Zoom link for that, and you can join. That's again Thursdays at 12 p.m., and hop on there and you can join us in prayer for that. And finally, announcement number three. Three. We'd love for you guys to follow us on social media. We have an Instagram and a Facebook account that we're active on. You can follow us at, at Fairfax Bible on both of those. And we've got some good content that's going to be coming out uh, on Monday. We're going to be giving you some tips on how to live sent during a pandemic. And we started a new at-home series as well where we're just getting a little peek inside uh, people's houses and see how you guys are holding up so we can uh, see each other and say hi. So follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Fairfax Bible, and we'll see you over there. But right now, stand up, get ready to sing, and we are going to worship with... JT and Janum. Perfect. Thanks so much for that, Grace. We're going to go ahead and get started in worship here. Uh, we got two songs, The Lion and The Lamb, and then uh, In Christ Alone. As always, uh, lyrics are in the description below if you need that. And uh, why don't we get started here? We're going to sing The Lion and the Lamb first. <laughs>
Thank you once again for another opportunity to worship you. Uh, we sing your praise this morning, wherever we are, whatever circumstances is going on in our lives. We trust you and that we stand upon you alone, God. We pray that you would be in the preaching of your message this morning uh, and just prepare our hearts to hear your word. And uh, we pray all of this in your precious son, Jesus' name. Well, good morning, Fairfax Bible Church. So glad to be able to worship with you this morning. So if you got your Bibles, why don't you grab those and let's go to the book of Philippians. Uh, we started last week looking at this uh, book of Philippians. This is going to take us all the way through June. We're just kind of working through this verse by verse because we want to hear what the Lord has for us. We want to listen to him and the message uh, that he wants to bring to us even today. And uh, so some of the things that we've, uh, the themes that we're seeing in this book have already started to come out where Paul is just urging us to uh, live out and advance the gospel even when it's hard and knowing that there is joy and there is unity in Jesus. And uh, so last week we saw Paul had started praying for them. Now we're actually going to see uh, what he's praying about. We're going to look at just three verses. We're looking at uh, verses 9, 10, and 11 today. And uh, in verses 9, 10, and 11, we're actually going to see the content of Paul's prayer. It's like one thing to say, hey, praying for you. It's kind of another thing to be able to tell somebody, let me tell you exactly what I'm praying for. And we're going to see that in here. And actually, as we look at these verses, I'm going to want you to kind of notice what he's not praying for. 
What he doesn't pray for specifically is for their uh, physical safety. Uh, he's not asking God to really improve their circumstances, even though he kind of knows that they're going through some difficult times. It's not that he doesn't care about those things. He really does. But there's something that he's more focused on. There's something that he wants even more that he's praying about. He's praying specifically that they would grow spiritually. And the thing that he really wants them to grow in is their love. I want you to grow in your love. And, and, and I just got to tell you, like, I, I've been thinking about this prayer, and, and these are some of the things that I've been praying for you about. Like, I don't know how long this is going to last. And, and man, I just, I, I feel like this, this ache in my heart that just keeps growing. Like, I'm done with this. I just want to be together with you. And, uh, but I also am praying that however long this season lasts, that, that, that God is really going to help you grow. Uh, that he's going to do something awesome in the midst of this and really help us as a church family grow spiritually and become a, an even more loving community. I'm, I'm so thankful for the love that we already share. God's obviously done a pretty sweet thing, and we're just praying that he's going to continue to do that. We've already acknowledged that, that God's the one doing the work, and the encouraging promise that we saw last week in verse 6 is that if God has started something, he's going to finish it. Man, that's that's just an awesome promise that we're holding on to. God, would you just do this work that you started in us and, 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 and don't stop. Like, I want to be loving. I'm just admitting to you right up front, like, uh, man, I'm nowhere near where I need to be on this one. But the encouraging part is like, God's not done with me. In fact, this is uh, the big idea as we look at what Paul is praying for. Uh, here's the thing that I want you uh, to kind of uh, uh, internalize with me. We need to acknowledge that we've all got room to grow and we need God's help. Like we're not where we need to be. We got room to grow on this one in being a loving community. And if that's really going to happen, man, we need God to help us with that which is why we would pray about that, which is why Paul is praying for this. So uh, let's read this, uh, starting in verse 9. We're in Philippians chapter 1, starting in verse 9. Paul says, It is my prayer that your love may abound more and more with knowledge and all discernment so that you may be able to approve what is excellent and so be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and the praise of God. So man, there's some awesome theology that is packed into these three verses. Uh, uh, but let me give you three questions. Let's just kind of personalize this. Like, like we want to be growing here. So let me, uh, let me give you three questions that I can ask myself that's really going to cause me to get on my knees and ask God to help me grow. Okay, here's the first one. Is my love growing? Is my love growing? growing. He says, I want you, I'm praying that your love may abound more and more. Are you, are you loving? I, I think it would be fair for you to ask the question, loving who? Like, who are we talking about? Are we, am I loving my wife? Am I loving my kids? Am I loving my uh, small group leader? Am I loving the uh, pizza delivery guy? I mean, like, who are we talking about? Well, I want you to notice that the, the object or the recipient of our love is not specified here. Who am I supposed to be loving? It doesn't say. Now, the context would suggest that he's talking about loving one another, our brothers and sisters in the church. I mean, he's just been uh, declaring his love for them and his longing for these believers. So it makes sense that he's trying to just extend that, that you would have that kind of same love that it'd be growing in your relationships in the church. But I don't think it's limited to that. I think this is love for, for everyone. Your entire life needs to be characterized by love. Are you known as someone who loves? So it's, it's not necessarily surprising that we would talk about love in church, but I want to make sure, uh, let, let's, let's try to define it a little bit so that, that, that we know exactly what we mean when we say love. In fact, um, if, if you wouldn't mind to be helpful, maybe you can put your comments, uh, your thoughts in the comments right now. Like what, what comes into your mind when you think about love? 
you know, let us know. Like, what, 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 what really comes into your mind? And I know, like, this is your pastor asking, and so you're trying to make sure that it's like a biblical answer. But it's okay for just be honest. Like, like when you, when you think about love, uh, what is that? What, what, what really comes into your mind first? I thought we would do a survey. And so in order to survey, I thought I'd hit the streets this week, uh, and, or at least in the spirit of social distancing, that I would uh, hit the various rooms in my house. And, and I went around and interviewed my kids. Uh, this might be an interesting uh, survey that you could do with your kids and get some answers on this. Like, what, does, what, 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 do, what do you think about when you think about love? Check this out. All right, I'm going to have to interrupt my little bookworm here in just a minute. Here she is reading. Jolie, yes. what do you think about when you think about love? I think about fairy tales because it always ends up, they always end up with true love. What's your favorite fairy tale? Uh, my favorite fairy tale is Cinderella. Why is that? Um, because it shows the true inner beauty. True inner beauty. That's mm -hmm. awesome. I love that. Dot. <laughs> so what do you think about when you think about love? Uh, kissing mommy. Kissing mommy? That's what you think about? Yeah. Is that what love means? Yeah. What else do you think love means? What do you think about when you think about love? Uh, going down the stairs. Yeah. Jumping on the trampoline. Jumping on the trampoline. What else? Hmm. What is love? Uh, mean you have to get, uh, what is it, Dad? I'm asking you. Hmm. All right, Jason. What do you think about when you think about love? I think hugs and kisses. Hugs and kisses, that's what reminds you, that's what you think about when you think about love? Is there something in the Bible that you think about when you think about love? Mm, Jesus loves us and that's takes a good answer. care of us. That's a good answer. I love you. All right, Judah, I'm going to interrupt your Lego building. You got a face over here. Uh, what do you think about when you think about love? I think about hearts. And the verse John three sixteen, and about how Jesus died on the cross. That's pretty good. Is there something that you love besides Legos? You. <laughs> Thanks. Uh. Doing laundry. Doing laundry. That's yeah. love. Yeah. Oh. Is there a movie that you think about when you think about love? My favorite is Catboy. Catboy? Yeah. That makes you think about love? Yeah. Why? Because I love Catboy and Ghetto just jumps over Catboy. Mm. PJ Masks. You love PJ Masks? Yeah, I want to watch one of those. Okay, we'll watch one of those. Okay, so I feel like I have failed miserably as a parent. I mean, I, you know, maybe, uh, you know, kisses and, and laundry is actually a pretty good answer. But, it, you know, it, it, it's kind of natural for us. We often think about emotions and romance when we think about love. But, but the word here in the text is, is a familiar word in the Greek. You know this word. It's the word agape. It, it, it's not the same as the affection that he was talking about in verse 8, where, where that affection was like this deep emotion, a care and concern, and like even, even his longing for them. The, the word agape is really the love of God, this faithful love of God that is ultimately demonstrated by Christ on the cross. And, and so, yes, like emotion is involved, but it's displayed in action uh, for the benefit of the one that you love. Like, like, like a concern for others and I'm putting their needs before my own. That's the example that we're going to see in the heart of this book in Philippians chapter 2 where we're seeing the example. This is what Jesus did for us. He put it into action. How are you doing in 
that kind of love. The self-sacrificing, I'm considering others before myself. I'm putting your needs before me. I want, I'm thinking about your best interest. I'm putting, uh, I, I want to be a blessing to you. That kind of love. And Paul says, I want your love to abound. That, that word means it's growing. Like you have enough and then some. Like more than enough. It's, it's, it's full to the point where it's starting to just overflow and it's just pouring out. I wanted to give you, uh, check this out. Here's, here's a visual of what this word, in, in my mind, I think about uh, one of my favorite places to go in the D.C. area. It's, it's Great Falls. And you just see this water just pouring over and over and over. That's the kind of growth that he's talking about. There's just some power and, and abundance there. In fact, I, I decided I would also potentially give you a demonstration. This could go horribly wrong, uh, but I'm going to try to give you a little bit of a visual so that you can picture what Paul's talking about here. When he says, I want your love to abound, first off, I want it, I want your love to be full, like you have enough, but then you have more than enough. Uh, uh, it's a, a full and overflowing. Like Paul already knows that they're full of love. They've demonstrated how much love they have for him. In chapter 4, he's going to say, hey guys, you're, you're the only church that entered into partnership with me in giving and receiving. There's no other church that was sending help for my needs. When I was in Thessalonica, you guys sent me help for my needs once and again. Not just once, but twice. And now I've received the gift from Epaphroditus that you guys sent along. I mean, have, have, have you guys, you ever received a, a care package or, or, or received a gift from somebody. Somebody uh, dropped off a gift for us this week. It's just so encouraging to think that somebody's thinking about you and, and just wants to reach out and, and creatively uh, give to you. I mean, that, that, that shows love. These guys already have love, but he's saying, more than that, like, I know you love, but I just want you to keep loving to the point where it's just abounding and overflowing here. Okay, so um, I hope that helps you. Give me just a sec here while I uh, try to clean this up. Okay, we're all good here. So I, I, I realize that it's probably going to drive some of you nuts thinking that I just like dumped water all over the place. I didn't do that. I was sort of prepared. But hopefully this uh, kind of helped you understand the word and what Paul is trying to tell us here when he says, I want your love to abound more and more. What he's saying is there's still room to grow. And I think about some of you, you are so full of love. When I think about the way that you're always thinking about others and reaching out and caring for other people, you're so full of love. But even then, there's still room to grow. Like it never has to stop. It can just keep going more and more. So, so then we want to kind of personalize this then and just ask ourselves, like, where do I really need to grow in this? Like where, where do I have room to grow in my love? How are you doing in loving our, our church family? Caring and meeting people's needs and, and, and praying for other people and not letting just weeks and weeks go by where you're not checking in. Like, do you know how they're doing? And have you been listening how they're doing emotionally and spiritually and just praying for them and, and, and faithfully connecting and not neglecting to meet together, even if it's just virtually, but, but, but like we want to lean into these relationships and, and encourage one another and share truth. How are you doing in loving brothers and sisters in our church family? Or how are you doing loving your neighbors? Like if we were to ask the people that are sitting in the house next to you right now, if we, if we could just go to them and ask them, would, would they say that they, they feel loved by you, that they, uh, they, they, they don't feel alone, they feel like you've reached out, that you've really uh, cared for them? Or how are you doing in loving your roommates or your kids? or your husband, or your wife. Like, like, why is it so much easier for us to try to be loving towards the people that we don't have to live with every day, and, and so much harder for us to, to, to really uh, put those people that we're living with before ourselves? Like, sometimes it's easier to go drop off cookies at the neighbors than to be patient with a roommate, or uh, to be loving and kind towards... Uh, spouse or to sacrifice time and uh, go do something that your kids want to do when you don't feel like it. 
And, and I'm thinking about the way, like, th this quarantine and the time that we're all stuck inside the house together, I realize, like, sometimes that can put a strain on relationships, and maybe it just reveals and exposes some areas where we really need to grow in our love. And, and, and the reality is, even if I'm looking at my life and I'm like, yeah, I can see areas where I have grown and, I'm, and I am loving and I've, and I've been putting others first and, and I've been thinking about them and I've been reaching out and I've been caring for others and, 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 and showing compassion to others. Like no matter how I'm doing, I still have room to grow. And if I'm going to grow in this, I need God's help, which means I better be praying like, Lord, help me. I, I want to love more and more. Well, here's the, the second question that I can ask myself that's really going to cause me to get on my knees and ask God for help as I'm growing. The second question is this, is my love discerning? Is my love discerning? He says, I, I want your love to abound more and more with knowledge and all discernment. So now he's answering the question, how should my love be growing? And he's saying, I want it to grow with, with knowledge. That means it, it's not just emotional, it's, it's cognitive. That, that, that this, my love must be informed and governed by the truth. And where am I going to get that? Well, it's from the word of God. That, that, that the word of God is going to instruct me and tell me how to love. The word of God tells me that my love is to be pure. Like it tells me what's right and how I'm supposed to do this. Like my, my love is supposed to be pure, meaning I'm, I, I, it's expressed in appropriate boundaries and I'm uh, following God's design for relationships. And I'm not just looking for what I can get out of it, but I'm looking for the benefit of others. And my love is supposed to build up and encourage and help them grow in their relationship with Christ, looking out for their best interests. And, and God's words tells me that my love is to be forgiving. And, and when, when, when I'm wronged or when people hurt me or when somebody doesn't even like me, like how am I supposed to really love them and be forgiving towards them? And it tells me that my love is to be submissive and, and, and humble and sacrificial. And I'm like laying down my rights, laying down my desires, and I'm putting others before myself. And, and it tells me my love is to be patient and, and gentle and, and, and kind and understanding and compassionate in the way that I talk to them and the way I treat them. And, and it tells me that my love is to be enduring, that it bears, bears all things. It doesn't just give up when it gets hard. See, God's word helps me know how to love. And love that is growing in knowledge means that it's not just this uh, unchecked, uncontrolled emotion and passion, right? Like, just follow your heart. You probably watch some uh, Disney movies or something on Netflix that's kind of encourage you just kind of go with that. Just go with what feels right. You'll know it when you feel it. And how, how can you deny what you feel? And how could it be wrong when you can't really help what you feel, how you feel? So like just 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 go with it. But 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 the knowledge of the truth in God's word tells us what's right and what's wrong. And so I want to submit to the authority of God's word and what he says. I'm not free to just go out and do whatever I want and make the excuse that it's just the way that I feel. This should be right. This is how I feel. No, I'm learning how to love in the way that God instructs me in his word. And also just keeping in mind uh, that that's not necessarily a, a bad thing or a, uh, I, it's like I have to do that begrudgingly. God's way is always best. So it's actually in my best interest that I would love with knowledge governed by the truth of his word. But, but he also says not just knowledge, but he says all discernment. So that's not just talking about what's right, but what's best. It, it means uh, perception or insight or wisdom on how to practically apply God's command to love. And so I think about um, the way this would work when I'm recognizing that my wife, Carissa, is just maybe she's like run down and worn out and she just needs encouragement. So, so knowledge would tell me the right thing to do is for me to help and to care for her and to try to meet her needs and encourage her. But the best way 
may not be just like showering her with some compliments and trying to say the right things. So, like I would think that that would make sense. And sometimes it does. And it's not like she doesn't want that. But sometimes the best way that I can do that is to just shut up and bring her a double stuffed Oreo. Like, so I've, I've learned, that's, that's actually part of what this word means. Of like, I've, I've actually put it into practice and I've got some experience now. I, I'm growing in my experience of applying God's word so that I know the best way to show love. I know the best way to respond when my kid colors all over the walls and I've got to like uh, uh, do some discipline here. Or I know the best way to, to, to demonstrate kindness to my roommate and in a way that's really going to be meaningful there. And, and I also uh, actually know how to meet the needs of my neighbor and not just say it, but I'm, I'm, I'm doing that. This, it's, it's great when you feel love. It's so much better when, when you grow in knowledge and discernment so that emotion can be coupled and enhanced by insight and the moral capacity to see what's best. Now, why do we want to do this? Why do we want to be growing and abounding more and more in, in, in love with knowledge and all discernment? Well, he says in verse 10, look at, look at verse 10. He says, so that, there's a purpose clause, so that you may approve what is Excellent. So that, that word excellent is a comparative word. It, it means superior. It's, it's better. It's more valuable. So what he's saying is I want you to be able to see clearly what's most important. I want you to choose the best, what's most valuable, what's most important. It means that I'm prioritizing what matters most in my life. I'm not wasting my life because as a believer in Jesus, I realize there are some, some things that just, they really don't matter. And I can look at those lesser pursuits and I'm realizing like, I have a greater purpose for my life than chasing after that. I don't want to waste my life in this. I want to grow in discerning love. And I don't want foolishness or impurity or selfishness to hinder my pursuit of Christ and loving others. Like, I got a greater reason for being here than that. And when I'm doing that, he says, I'm doing this so that we'll be pure and blameless for the day of Christ. Pure and blameless for the day of Christ. That's the result of uh, what happens when we choose what's best? Pure and blameless. So, so um, maybe this has happened to you where you've walked outside recently and maybe you were, I don't know, going to get the mail or you were taking the trash out and your neighbor saw you and you looked down and realized you're still wearing sweatpants and you've got like a stain on your shirt from breakfast. And you didn't see it before, but uh, now that you've come out into the sunlight, you look down, you realize this, like, that's the idea of the word pure here. The, the word has the, uh, the idea of uh, being tested by the light. Once you're out in the light, you can really see it. And so he's saying, I want you to be pure and blameless for the day of Christ. The day of Christ is the reminder, Jesus is coming back. I want you to live in such a way so that when Jesus comes, who, by the way, is the one who sees everything, he's going to notice the stains. Like it's just exposed by the light. I want you to live in such a way so that when Jesus comes, he's going to see that you are genuinely pure. And, and the word blameless means not, not offending, not, not causing somebody else to, to stumble. It's the reminder that it's, it's not loving for me to make self-centered choices and uh, to just do whatever I want to do, um, even if it's going to hurt somebody else, even if it's going to cause division or even worse, tempt them into sin too. Like, I'm not free to do that. That's not loving. It matters how I live, and I want to live in light of Jesus coming back. And because he's coming back, I want to grow in love, and I want to grow in discernment. And so maybe there's some things that you would have to give up right now that you've been doing or pursuing because you realize, like, that's, that's not right. Or maybe it's not even a, a, an issue of right and wrong as, as clearly as that, but you're realizing ah, it's not wise. And maybe you're realizing it's just not best. 
Like there's something better that I could be pursuing. And maybe that'll change the way we're looking at our entertainment and the movies and the TV shows that we're binge watching right now. Or, or the amount of time that we're spending on our phone or the way that we think about or talk about other people. Like I, I want to reflect Jesus. I, I want to be, verse 11, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ. That, that, that fruit of righteousness, there's, there's like new fruit coming out of my life now. New, new actions and choices and attitudes. It's, it's different now because the Spirit of God has been doing a work in my heart. I'm filled with the fruit of righteousness. Now, first off, I've got the, the positional righteous, where, where, where I stand before God as righteous. Not because of my righteous, not because of anything I've done, but because of what Jesus has accomplished for me. And, and, and now uh, I am covered by the blood of Christ, and I have been given the righteousness of Jesus. And so now he has changed my heart so that I live differently that I'm living righteously. Like, man, that, that, that's the kind of uh, discernment that we're going to need to be able to understand what God's Word says, that I want to come under this, I, I want to live in light of this, I want to submit to this, but I also want the insight and the wisdom to be able to apply this practically and choose what is best. Man, we're going to have to pray for that. God help us. But let me give you the third uh, question that we should be asking ourselves right now. Is my love glorifying to God? Is my love glorifying to God? I love how he ends this at the, be, uh, at the very end of verse 11. He says, this is to the glory and the praise of God. That's the ultimate end for which Paul is praying. This is what happens when, when my love is growing and abounding more and more with knowledge and all discernment so that I'm able to approve what is excellent and so be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the righteousness of Jesus Christ. That's what happens when, when my love is abounding there and I'm growing in that way. God gets all the glory. That's what I want. Is the way that I'm living, loving him and, and loving other people, is that bringing glory to God? Like I'm just acknowledging and I think... Maybe you would as well. Like, we've still got some room to grow in this. Which is why we would pray for it. God, help us in this area. And the real question is, is the glory of God my ultimate motivation? He is what I want most. So much so that, that when I'm crashing on the couch and I feel like putting my own needs first and, and looking out for me right now. That's the way I feel. But the glory of God just motivates my heart to get up off of my can and go serve somebody in my household and put their needs before mine. Because that's the way that Jesus treated us. And the glory of God makes me think about how do I respond. And just as Jesus has been so patient and so gracious and merciful to me. So I want to show compassion and, and forgiveness and, and patience and kindness to people when, when, they're wrong, when they wrong me. And then I, I, I want to think about what's, what's best. I want to rearrange my priorities and realize I've got a greater purpose than just living for my comfort and my convenience. I want to choose what's best and live for his glory. Just praying that God would help us to grow in this way. And I know we've all got room to grow in that, but trusting that the work that he started, he is going to bring to completion at the day of Christ Jesus. Lord God, would you do this work in us? We're just admitting to you that we've got room to grow in this and we want to be a loving community that is choosing what is best. And so would you help our love to abound more and more with knowledge and all discernment so that we can approve what is excellent and so be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and the praise of God. You are so worthy of it and we need you desperately. Would you do this work in us so that you get the glory? In Jesus' name, amen.
good to worship with you all this morning. We are going to wrap up our service here, and JT is going to join us to share our verse <laughs> of the week. We, we got a new memory verse. Uh, this one also comes from Philippians chapter 2, verses 3 through 11, and I'll read it here. It says, Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves. So hopefully you can be uh, reciting that and getting God's word in your heart as you are, I don't know, washing the dishes or uh, washing your hands or whatever it might be. And then I got a couple of ways that you can put this into practice. First of all, you know that prayer is important to our church. We talk about it all the time. Uh, but that's, that's one way that I would really encourage you to be praying during this time uh, for other believers, not only within Fairfax Bible Church, but also within Northern Virginia at large for some of the other churches in this area. And then the second way you can put this into practice and consider others above yourself is uh, we've got a service opportunity for you. So on our Next Steps page, uh, it should be the, the first result there. So the Catherine Hanley Family Shelter and with everything that's been going on with coronavirus, they actually had to eliminate their linen service. So there's a number of other churches in the area that are uh, coming together, and we are trying to provide 300 uh, bed sheets for them. So go on to our Next Steps page. There's an Amazon wish list link that you can click on, and uh, it's, it's got everything that uh, you need in there to help provide for them. Mm -hmm. Um, so I, that officially concludes our service this morning. And as you go, remember to love Christ and live sent. <laughs>